Hi, my name is Bushra. I'm a product coach and consultant with almost a decade of hands-on product management experience. And I'm a Pure Dojo partner at the same time. Today, um, I want to share with you my toolbox. Why I'm going to do that is actually clear we're in this situation where everybody needs to work from home and everybody's suddenly remote and so are product managers as well um, i've worked like for quite some time in a remote setup and also in a distributed setup in different companies and i want to share with you the tools that help me to do my job very well and yeah stay sane at the same time and also help me to uh take care a bit of my team, my work, my priorities, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna start with like the basics. The basics are things that you typically cannot um, have an effect on. It's like the main decision between G Suite or Microsoft. Um, when, and when I say Microsoft, then I mean uh, my, Microsoft Office 365, which is the, um, cloud solution of the Microsoft Office Suite. Um, if you have Microsoft, um, then you will probably be using uh, Teams. I haven't used Teams at all. Um, I'm not sure what it can do and what cannot, but I've used Slack a lot and I've also seen companies who use both Teams and Slack for different purposes. So. Some apps I'm going to share with you will be Slack apps. Um, then another basic uh, decision that probably your uh, company will take is the video conferencing tool that you're going to go with. This is something that you might also have a say in, but maybe not. And typically, if you use the G Suite, then you will probably have to work only with Google Meet or Google Hangouts, or however you want to call it. Um, an alternative to that, as you know by now already, is, is Zoom, which is what I'm using right now. Um, however, I mean, there, there are news about uh, privacy issues with Zoom. To be honest, I personally think any tool that you're using is somehow sending uh, some usage information to a company if it's hangouts then you know google knows everything so that is not the big problem that i have right now with with zoom it's rather the point that um there seems to be a security issue with macs um with macbooks um yeah that attackers might be able to hack your camera and I hope that Zoom um, will fix this soon because I, I like Zoom a lot, but for anybody who has problems with that, like really deep problems with that, um, you might want to check out WebEx or GoToMeeting, especially for large group meetings, uh, like for above 100 people, or for smaller meetings, you might want to check out Whereby if you don't want to use Google Hangouts. So you can, Look at these ones. I'm still okay with Zoom. I have, you know, my workaround to cover my camera just in case. I'm fine with that, and I hope that Zoom will fix it um, very soon. Um, then another question about basics is how you're handling your wiki. Um, if you like the majority of the companies and you're using the Atlassian um, solution. Jira, then you'll probably also be using Confluence. However, I have um, I have an alternative for you. If you're using it or not, I don't know, but I have an alternative for you. And having said that, I'll actually start sharing my screen because I want to show, show you the tools that I'm using and not only talk about them. So the alternative that I want to show you is Notion. Notion is a really, really great tool, um, notion.so, as you can see. It's really clean and it, it's really nice to, to write things here, whatever you want to write. Um, and you can also, you can also uh, 
at different types of input, you know, like headings, bullet points, and so on and so forth. But not only that, it's not only the format stuff, but it's also tables. It's so easy to create tables in Notion. It's really, it's really an amazing uh, feature. And we're using tables a lot. Um, then also things like, yeah, you can even have a card. You can use it as a Kanban board. You can use it for whatever. And it's really nice. The only thing that I'm missing here right now, and I, and I hope that um, they will uh, add this feature is actually creating flow charts. So, or any other kind of, you know, charts um, inside of, of Notion um, as a Notion page or as a, or within the Notion page, just, you know, flow charts. Flow charts are important. Notion guides, please add flow charts. Um, so this is a really great alternative to Confluence if you have, you know, some sort of power to, to affect the decision, um, or, or yeah, uh, then check this one out. Then another basic tool to do things is Airtable. Um, and I'm showing you here a, a, a clean and new uh, sheet. So what is Airtable? Airtable is a smart spreadsheet, but even more than just a smart spreadsheet. I mean, you can, you can you know, write things as you want. You can change um, the type of the field, whatever uh, type of field you want to have. You can even have multiple selects. You can have uh, check boxes, dates, whatever you what whatever type of field you wanna you wanna put in here, you can have it. And then once you have your uh, yeah data, you, you can really really nicely use it as kind of a database. Once you have your data, you can add these blocks on top of it and then create your dashboards for the data. Or and that's the next basic tool that I want to uh, show you is. Um, Zapier, so you can also uh, run Zaps with Airtable. Um, so you should have Zapier as one of your fixed tools, you know, to automate things. I mean, we product managers are busy all the time. And um, yeah, it's really life and time savers if you can automate things. And if there is something that's happening again and again, I don't know, a typical email comes in and, you know, you want to like, for example, from, from uh, customers and you want to store it somewhere, for example, in an air table, then you can create a zap to, you know, whenever you label an email with X, Y, Z, then it should be um, added to air table as a new row, for example. And you can do that kind of things. It should be really part of your uh, standard tool, tool set. Then let's go to Slack apps, um, and here are some Slack apps that will make your daily life easier. So first of all, I want to show you Standably. Standably is really cool. We use Standably for, um, you know, the stand-up, a written stand-up. You can adjust the question. So if it says, how did you make the world a better place yesterday, like in this uh, small little GIF, um, then you can actually, you don't have to ask this question. You can ask different other questions. So we ask the typical three stand-up questions, um, but you can also use it for things like, yeah, planning poker, for example, or uh, team polls, 360 degree feedback, and so on and so forth. So there's some examples, you can check it out, and it's really, really nice to use, and it's um, really, really um, easy. Um, everybody answers those questions or everybody who's following the stand-up bot answer these questions and then they get like the answers get um, summarized in the channel that you want to have them summarize it. Uh, yeah, check this out. This is a really nice one. Then the next really, really nice uh, Slack app is Send It Later. It actually does what it says. So basically it's for this case you know when we once you are a product manager you're always a product manager whatever you do you think like a product manager you start to analyze 
the service, the product that you're using and so on and so forth. And then you suddenly have ideas about your own product, what you should change or what kind of uh, improvement could work or help here or there. And then, you know, because we want to get it out of our brain, we want to write it to somebody. And we start the sentence with, this is for tomorrow, don't read it now. And then we write our message and send it out, right? It doesn't work, the people still read it immediately. They don't read it tomorrow. This Slack app helps you exactly with that problem. You can write down whatever you want, your whole message, um, start it with, with the command slash later in your Slack. So you write slash later and then you write your message. And then you send it and the app sends it automatically the next day at 9 a.m. As far as I can, uh, as far as I know, you can, you can um, adjust the timing when it should send it uh, to the person you want to send it to. But 9 a.m. always worked very well for me. And um, yeah, it's fine. Uh, saved a lot of evenings for me and, 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 and others as well, because they would not get my message in the evening right and they would not get disturbed even if you even if you mute it i mean there's still people who manually open slack and want to read things and this way you actually uh, prevent any kind of uh, evening um, disruptions then the next one is a to-do app it's workcast um it's a really nice to do slack app um check it out um there's not much to say. I mean, there's different types of Slack apps that uh, to do apps. There is also Wunderlist. Um, I'm not sure how long they're going to um, offer uh, the app though. Um, but yeah, I like this one a lot um, and it helps. And then the next Slack app, uh, which is also a platform, is Doodle. Um, of course, if you want to pull a time when everybody can meet, Doodle works perfectly fine. You can poll in the Slack app. You can also poll on the website. And polling is not the only thing that you can do. Um, you can also send your um, bookable calendar link to somebody and you, know, you set it up in a way that it, that it shows your availabilities. And then this person can just book a one-on-one -on -one right away, for example. Or you can also use the Zapier integration. You can set up manual one-on-one -on -one, um, links um, you know, where you pick the times that you want to offer for a one-on-one -on -one meeting manually. Um, and you can do all of that um, on, the, on the dual platform. Um, check it out. It, I can only recommend it. I'm uh, still using it a lot. Um, and what Doodle also does very well is it actually handles time zones very, very well. So if you are distributed, um, all over the world, especially now when, you know, there's more and more companies who need contractors to get things done. Um, and those contractors are sitting in different other countries, then you need to handle time zones. And Doodle is one way um, to handle time zones very, very well. Um, another way and another uh, yeah, website that I'm using for time zones, which is really, really nice is this uh, figure it out it's the figure it out uh, website so you can have a chrome extension as well um, i don't have the chrome extension i'm just using the the web version from time to time and this is basically how it looks like when you when you have you know set up your or the time zones that you want to look at so as an example um yeah an example is this, I'm in Zurich. Let me reset the time, I'm in Zurich. And I want to look at the time in Atlanta and at the same time in Mumbai, for example. And um, yeah, this is super easy. I can just add another location. Um, let's say Toronto. Oh, what a surprise. It's the same time zone as Atlanta, ha. Huh? Anyway. <laughs> And what you can also do is, so you can manually set the time to whatever you want to know, let's say uh, 12, 
uh, 25 or 15, 25. Um, I can also do this by just swiping. So I'm just swiping. And you see as I'm swiping, the times are changing. Then I can reset the time. So this is really nice. You can try that out. Um, you can also create an uh, event based on those um, time zones. So there's also a way um, to use it. And then I want to show you um, this page as well. Um, that's the last one on the topic of time zones. I, I promise this is another way how to look at time zones. So if you have a um, block in, you can basically change um, the time zones here on the, uh, on, on the left-hand side, decide on which time zones you want to look at, and then you see um, immediately what time it is where. So that's all about time zones. Uh, time zones are important when you're distributed uh, across the world. So time zones, look at time zones. Good, then, <clears throat> Let's talk a bit about um, video, about videos and um, nowadays we're more and more in a setup where we also want to um, have webinars, right? Either you are a product consultant and want to um, have some, some webinars or you're really just a product manager or somebody else, doesn't have to be the product manager, and you had, um, let's say, brown bag uh, meetings, right? So lunch meetings, brown bag meetings, however you want to call it. Um, and you want to hold something like a webinar. So one way to do this is just have a normal call, like with Zoom or with Hangout or whatever. Or you really want to do it like a webinar, you know, with questions and with polling and interactive and so on and so forth. So there is um, two things that I want to show you. One is, so you can, again, either set up a Zoom call or a Hangouts call or whichever video uh, call calling solution you want to use for that. And then you can use Slido. Uh, yeah. Let me just quickly open Slido. So you can use Slido basically to create um, uh, your Q&A page. So people can upload questions here and then they can upvote the questions. Um, it's kind of like the dot polling. If you want, you can, you can introduce dot polling um, rules or you just say, hey, uh, like the questions that you want to talk about. Um, and then it's automatically real time um, pushes the questions with the highest votes um, to the top and you can this way manage the Q&A session. Or you can also add interactive um, polls um, during the uh, webinar. Um, yeah, you can have, as you can see, a tech cloud. You can have just a simple polling. You can have text polling. You can have um, different kind of, of uh, polls. Um, this is one thing that you can do. Um, Slido is, by the way, um, right now testing a beta. Um, they have teamed up with Zoom and they are, you can request um, access to the beta to uh, run a Zoom call and um, have the Q&A and polling at the same time with Slido. So you might want to check that out. The other option is um, Livestorm. And this is a webinar app actually that is already um, set up exactly like that. So you have the call, you have a chat, and at the same time, do I find a picture here? Yeah, here, um, you have the chat. And it, um, you can show the people, you don't have to. Um, if you don't, then it's as anonymous as the people write their um, names and upload a picture. And, and then you can have questions and polls at the same time while um, actually you're seeing the, the video. 
So that's um, the other option and you can record it um, as well. Good, what if you are not running something like a webinar, but rather you want to record your screen, for example, or also your face in a minute, um, because you want to record a walkthrough. You know, you've just released a feature, a new one, and you want to make sure that your support angels and your sales angels, or maybe even your customers, um, know how to use it and want to record a walkthrough that happens again and again, then um, I haven't tried Lifestone with that. I've tried Loom and that's the alternative to Zoom. So this is what you can basically do. Like right now I'm, I'm um, recording this with, with Zoom. Nice thing about Zoom is you can really switch between, um, you know, camera only and camera plus uh, your screen. Um, that's something that you cannot do with Loom. With Loom, you have to, as you can see, I have the Chrome extension. Um, you have to decide upfront if you want to use screen and cam or only screen or cam only. Um, you cannot switch in between um, as far as I um, know. Um, that's a big plus for Zoom. However, uh, what is really nice about Loom is that, um, and that's why I'm, I'm using Loom for this scenario rather than Zoom, um, is that anybody who watches the video can point um, on the second, uh, you know, pin a thumbs up, pin a question, pin any kind of reaction to your video on the second, on a specific second, and write something. And this way you immediately see which part of your video actually um, triggers emotions or I don't know, is unclear um, or whatever, you know, where people have questions or any kind of reactions. You see that immediately. And this is super useful because based on that, you can either re-record um, a walkthrough or you can even build an FAQ based on that, for example. Um, so yeah, try it out, Loom or Zoom. Okay, going back to the webinar scenario. Um, there's also a case now um, that you've lost your whiteboards, your physical whiteboards. Um, so there is two alternatives, how you can still have, um, you know, an interaction based on a whiteboard um, and have it digital, which is Miro and Mural. You have these two alternatives. I'm pretty good with Miro, so I've used it um, quite a lot. Um, I'm pretty new to Mural. So far, I haven't seen many differences. However, um, it feels like it's just a feeling. It feels like Miro is is really really good for um, in-house interaction. So people you want to interact with are part of your team. Um, and mural feels like, yeah, rather the consultant case, like you, your, your contributors are externals, whatever that means. Either you know them or you don't know them, like they're anonymous or, or they're not. Um, it just, feels like that. I don't know, you should check them out, both of them. Um, Miro, ha like I think both have a completely free version. Um, Miro, Miro for sure, so I'm using um, the free version uh, for my private stuff. Um, I don't know about Miro, maybe there is a free version. I'm, I know that they have a um, free, free trial for 30 days, um, you want to check them out. It's the same with the templates, both um, offer uh, templates that you can use. Um, and I feel like the templates that you can find on Miro rather, rather resonate with a product manager who, or in general with a team that wants to collaboratively work something out. And the templates, in mural rather feel like the consultant cases. Like, yeah, you need to check them out. 
Um, okay, and then I'm also getting more and more the questions about um, how to run retros. Um, I mean, Scrum says, or in general, many agile coaches and scrum masters say um you can run a retrospective only with the people who are in the room well right now we don't have a room so how do we run remote retrospectives there's again two tools i want to show you one is fun um retro actually let me log in and and show you how that looks like um so you can have a board then you can set up the maximum votes um, you want to have you can actually start blank and you can adjust these things later which is the really really cool part about fun Ranger. you don't have to do the settings up front and then you can um, pick between different um, yeah types of, of retrospectives and then you create it and this is how it looks like it's so simple it's just really really super simple and then you can you can set whatever you want so you can have uh, you can say hide the cards which means yeah don't show the cards to the, to uh, all of the people you only see your own card cards at, at first and you as the admin uh, or moderator can um, show the cards to everybody uh, once you're once you're there once you're ready um, you can disable votes at first and, and then enable it. You can hide vote. Card. You can do a lot of things here and you can set them up like afterwards. And that's super cool. It's really easy. And um, everything happens on this screen. That's all you see. So nothing else happens. Um, I think you have, um, I think three boards for free. And then you have to pay more if you want to have more boards. The other option is Parabol. Um, of course, there's more options, but these are the two options or the two tools that I've used so far. Um, it's also nice. It's more the step-by-step um, -step guide type of tools, um, which means as in, in fun retro, you were actually, let's, uh, let's look at the demo, where in, in, in fun retro, you saw everything on that one board here you see everything like guided step by step so you you have a social check-in so this is something this is actually really um a funny feature i i like that um you have a check-in and then you get to the reflection part then you group it then you vote and then you discuss what's also nice about parable is um, at the end it sends you a summary of everything that doesn't happen in, in fun retro as long as you don't pay for it. It's a paid feature. Um, and here it's not a paid feature. It's just part of the solution. However, here you can have only two teams for free, which is kind of the same like two boards uh, or in fun retro it's three boards and it's kind of the same um, and it's more automated. Um, and here in Parable, you can also uh, select diff uh, between different types of retrospectives. So it's the same in here. Okay, then my final part um, is about Chrome extensions. As you can see, I have some. Um, let's start with Toby. So if you are a tab monster like me, uh, and believe me, this is nothing. <laughs> um then you are probably looking for ways how to deal with your tabs one way is toby um and as you can see this is basically what it does um you can you can make collections and then save your tabs in these collections it's kind of it's similar to one tab which is here but the difference is that one tab saves them as a list and Toby is more like visual, like cards. That's the only difference, actually. Um, I prefer Toby. I'm more, I'm the more visual type of person. Uh, my fiance prefers one tap, so whatever, whichever you want. Um, then another, uh, another Chrome extension that saves my life is Session. Uh, no, sorry, Fresh Start. 
And with Fresh Start, you can basically save your session in the window that you're using. Um, give it a title and save it, and then you can open the whole session at once as, as, you, as you wish. You can do the same with Toby, of course. It's different types of, of saving a session. I'm using both, depending on, on my need. Um, but yeah, you can really, really have like a long list of sessions, which I have, and I'm not going to show you <laughs> my, <laughs> all my sessions because it's a really long list. Um, and then the final Chrome extension I want to show you, again, for Tap Monsters, and I'm really, really thankful for this tip from one of my ex-colleagues, is the great suspender. So what happens is basically after a while, um, these tabs, the session on these tabs will suspend. That's what happens. And this way I'm, I'm saving CPU power, CPU power, my uh, machine um, runs a lot faster, doesn't uh, produce heat or less than if I, if I didn't use it. Um, and it's, it's really, really great. When I, when I open the tap, then uh, it activates the session again and the page reloads and starts again and I can use it and continue where I was. It's uh, pretty, pretty nice. All right, let's stop it here. Um, there is a couple of more apps I want to mention that I've not used myself and therefore I cannot give it a recommendation. I can just think that you might want to know about them and you might want to try them out. Um, the first I want to talk about is Shift. So the address, um, the URL is tryshift.com. Um, you know, I'm a person, I'm running three accounts at the same time and I have um, tabs for them. So three Gmail accounts, <clears throat> sorry, Google accounts. Um, and then I have three tabs for my inboxes and then three tabs for my calendars and um, three tabs for my um, drives. Um, and shift, um, shifts uh, value proposition is that you can basically handle all of your uh, accounts within one tool, which sounds great. I haven't tried it out myself, uh, but you might want to try it out. <clears throat> then um, the next one is knowyourteam.com. It's a, it's a tool that helps uh, managers and leaders to actually be good managers and leaders. Product managers are leaders. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if, they are, um, if they have direct reports or not, product managers are leaders. And if you want to be a good uh, product manager, you also need to be a good leader. So you might want to try that out. Um, then the next one I heard about is the Donut app. Um, I've heard that it helps a lot um, with, with onboarding to run random video calls between colleagues, um, for example. Uh, it's a Slack app. Uh, you might want to check out Donut, the Donut app. Um, and then another one, um, it's supposed to be a quiz to get to know your coworkers. Haven't tried it myself. It's called watercoolertrivia.com. Watercoolertrivia.com you might want to check that out too. And the final one, and I'm, I'm really uh, curious about, uh, like very, very curious about that one, I'm gonna try that out soon, is um, an asynchronous audio messaging um, app. It's like, you know, WhatsApp, when you send audio messages to your uh, friends and family, it's, it's, it's an app that enables you to send audio messages to your colleagues. And the website uh, or the tool is called YAC. It's um, yac.com. Yac.com, YAC. So I'm going to try that out. I, I'm really curious about that one. That was something that I was uh, missing in Slack. So maybe this is a cool thing. Yeah, and that's basically my a uh, list of tools that keep me sane and keep me productive. And there's of course more um, tools. There's Trello, there's Asana, there's like a lot of other things that I'm using for different other things. 
but these are the ones that is really like this is my tool set this these are the tools that i'm i'm working with now um, a lot and that really help me um to do my job very well um, if you have any other suggestions um, or any other recommendations for product, for product managers who need to work um, from home now, who need to work remotely now, um, let's get in touch. I'm really curious to hear about your suggestions and um, really looking, for, looking forward to um, trying some of them out. So uh, take care, um, stay sane, stay healthy, and yeah, bye.